Terry, you got the word that Randy probably won't make the meeting tonight. Over there. Well, I believe she's going to try to help you. Okay. Yeah, Randy said. Hey, Jack. Good to see you. That's my gavel. That is not a spoon. <laughs> I'd like to call to order the Upper Feather River Integrated Regional Water Management Program Regional Water Management Group. Uh, this is a special meeting, June 15th. And uh, we'll start out with roll call, please. Terry Phillips. Here. Paul Rowan. Here. Terry Swafford. Here. Russell B. Here. <laughs> Bill Nunes. I'm here and in, in sitting in for Bill. So make a note that Jeff Carmichael is uh, Bill Nunes alternate and is sitting there. I'm playing. I'm watching. Jim Roberti. Here. Trina Cunningham. Roger D. Taylor. or deletions to the agenda. Okay, here in the end. Brings us to public comment opportunity. This is a chance for the public to comment on any item under the purview of this group that is not on the agenda today. Otherwise, if you hold your comments till the agenda item is called, um, you can address that particular item at that time. So are there any public comments that aren't on the agenda? Thank you. Announcements and reports. Anybody got a hot off the press announcement? Uma? Nobody? Okay. Thank you. This is moving on. Consent agenda. Um, as most of us on the steering group found out, and some of you probably know too, our last meeting that we would have had posted on the website and live stream ended up with very good video and no sound. So Uma has come up with a draft meeting summary that captures pretty much everything that went on at the meeting. And uh, I would ask the group for approval. So moved. I'll second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. That brings us to the action agenda. And number one is the draft project eligibility checklist. So, would you like to talk a little bit about that? So, the last management group meeting in May, uh, we presented a draft eligibility uh, checklist, and that's to go through the projects today and help facilitate review of those. Um, there were a few modifications that we wanted to, uh, that we had included from that meeting. Uh, those modifications have been made and are in your packets. So I just wanted to briefly go over those. We added categories um, based on the decision from the management group last time to do uh, work group categories with the addition of the Tribal Advisory Committee. Also on the checklist, we identified that the plan objectives and resource management strategies are mandatory, uh, mandatory for minimum requirements. Um, and then we made sure that the list of the, from the Public Resources Code was consistent with the code. And we added a, a, a line item for project location and then also identification of whether or not the um, project component is an MOU signatory. So those have all been added to the form um, that we're requesting approval of today. And then once that's made, we'll make copies and distribute it for the um, project review process in item four. Okay. And basically what we want to say is that we didn't really change anything. We just added all the things that we agreed to at the last meeting. So we have a motion to approve those that final checklist. So moved. 
Got a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Opposed? Okay. Make copies quick. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we've got item number two, the draft project monitoring policy. Um, if you remember at the last meeting, we asked uh, staff to come up with a, suggestion, a suggested monitoring policy based on the fact that we felt that uh, we needed a policy that encouraged people not to monitor their own projects to have outside scientifically based monitoring if, if their project includes a requirement for monitoring. So this is the draft policy that the uh, staff is presenting to us. So Uma, would you like to talk a little bit about that? Um, so project monitoring is a, is a requirement that we address in the Irwin plan. Um, so what Proposition 84 guidelines says about it uh, is that the plan must address monitoring in the performance and monitoring chapter. Each project in the Irwin plan is monitored to comply with all applicable rules, laws, and permit requirements. And that's one of the uh, stipulations in the guidelines. So it's acknowledged that monitoring requirements may vary by grant. Um, and the purpose of this policy is to ensure that credible and transparent monitoring of projects is applied to all Irwin sanctioned projects. Um, so staff did draft a policy for consideration and discussion today. Um, and I'll just go ahead and read that. It's, although project monitoring requirements will vary by grant application, it is the <coughs> of the Upper Feather River Management Group that project monitoring for urban sanctioned projects should be objective, transparent, available to the public, encouraged to be conducted by an objective third party in the science space. That was a came out of some of the discussion that was had at the last meeting, and uh, we welcome some feedback and direction. Okay. I'll open that for discussion. Anybody wish to go there? I just would question the word encouraged as opposed to you know, if we're gonna take if we're gonna take the leadership role, do we want to change that or is that satisfactory? I mean encouraged doesn't mean that it just means that we're encouraging somebody to do it as opposed to we're requiring somebody to do it to have a third party. Uh, that's that's the word that jumps out of me. I don't know. I'll put it out there to talk about. Okay. Anybody want to talk about the word encourage as opposed to require? I feel we should be required myself. I mean, just the input that I've been giving as a board member, the questions I've been hearing, that's everybody's been concerned about how this is going to go. That's the only reason I bring that up. It does produce accountability, which is kind of like a good thing. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion to change encourage to require? Certainly. So moved. Okay. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of changing the word encourage in the draft policy to require? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uma will make that change in the policy. And with that change, uh, do I have a motion to accept the policy itself with the change? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we got a draft monitoring policy. Okay, draft project selection criteria. We're going to be reviewing the ranking criteria and at this point I want to make it really clear that today we are not ranking projects. Yeah. Uh, I think we've tried to make that clear to everybody yeah. that all we're looking at today is if they meet the criteria to be considered and then we will encourage the proponent to go ahead and complete a much more in-depth project proposal. So, Emma, you wanna, on that note, you want to go ahead? Sure. So there's been quite a bit of discussion about the project review criteria um, over the last few management uh, meetings in March and then again in May. So some, we've made some changes to the scoring criteria based on those discussions. Um, we've made sure that all of the project, uh, Proposition 84 guideline project review factors have been included. Um, we've written up the scoring criteria 
and that's in your packet. Um, what is yet to be done is to apply weighting factors. We haven't gotten any discussion of that yet. Um, and then we've added uh, the categories by crop by work group. So that will be the agricultural land stewardship, the floodplains, meadows, and water bodies, municipal services, the addition of the tribal advisory committee, and the uplands and forests. So the spreadsheet, uh, the project scoring criteria here, it's a little hard to see, but it is in your packets. Um, this has been modified to reflect that. Um, we took out, we also took out the matching funds and the leveling criteria um, that was based on the number of projects submitted. And then we moved a few of the review factors to a simple yes-no, um, whether they had been addressed. Those were technical feasibility of the project, economic feasibility, project status, and our contribution of the project in adapting to the effects of climate change and the reduction of greenhouse gases. So those have all been uh, moved to a yes-no, and the others are um, scoring criteria um, with a point system of one to three. And the intent then was to apply a weighting factor um, that would identify those areas that were determined to be most important to the region. Um, so as far as next steps, uh, we're ask staff is asking for consideration and approval of the scoring criteria. Um, we'll have to apply the weighting factors. I don't know if the management group would like to get into that today or save that for July as our next meeting. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty good little discussion, I think. Yeah, I think we're going to probably do that part uh, in July. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, to revise the Step 2 project information form to reflect the categories. So in the original form, we had identified five categories that were based, loosely based on the goals. Um, I think it would help be more helpful if we can just go ahead and make the categories, and that's the only change that we recommend to the form. Okay. And th those categories are the ones that we established that basically are the names of subgroups, but they aren't subgroups. Right. Okay. So, any discussion? Questions? Okay. Anybody wish to make a motion to uh, accept the selection and ranking criteria? Are you still reading? Yeah, I'm still trying to. Do okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So that brings us to review staff edit. Or did we just do that? I think we just did that. Okay. Are we at number four already? <laughs> Review of conceptual project summary, step one. And I think we're going to start with municipal services. If I'm right. Yeah. Um, should we just run through the, what we are actually doing today? Yes, yeah. please. So, as Sherry already stated, this is just a reminder that the intent of this exercise today is not to score, rank, or select projects for inclusion in the plan. This is just a review for minimum eligibility requirements so that those that meet that are eligible can move forward with a, more, uh, a longer application uh, for consideration. Um, so what, basically what we're looking for is, is the project located in or adjacent to the Upper Feather region? Um, does it address at least one of the plan objectives? Does it address at least one of the resource management strategies that have been selected for the region? And then does it address at least one of the elements of the public resources code? Um, and these items are on the, on the eligibility checklist that we'll be going through. So today, um, what staff has done is take an initial stab at categorizing the projects. So what we'd like to ask is that as we go through each project, that, we, that you either affirm the category or place it into a category, more suitable category, as you determine. Um, we'll look at the eligibility requirements. We'll look for opportunities for project integration. And I don't know that we have to go too detailed on the integration stuff, but if something is obvious, then we maybe 
want to include that as feedback to get that integration started early in the process. Um, quite a bit of integration has occurred at the work group level as we've worked through these um, submitting this first round. Um, and then to provide any feedback to the project proponents, um, maybe any potential problems or conflicts with plan objectives or other projects that may come up. Um, look, look for environmental justice impacts or impacts to disadvantaged communities or tribes. Um, the next step that we'll take after this process is staff will um, compile all of the, the list of vetted projects and that feedback, and then we'll be sending that out to the project proponents along with the um, step two project information form. And then uh, the work groups will start working with project proponents on the integration and development of their forms. August 3rd is the deadline for submission of step two. And then on August 21st, we have a work group integration workshop where we'll be looking at the projects and, and trying to integrate them further. Um, and then, then we'll get into the management uh, scoring and selection process. So with that, um, it is recommended that we start with the municipal services group. It's up to you guys. Um, we thought the municipal service group would be fairly straightforward as far as the eligibility, um, and it might help get us rolling. And one of the things, uh, trying to figure out how, how is best to do this, uh, Uma will be, as we go through, we're going to be like, yes, no, yes, no. She's going to have the main sheet and be marking it for the project. Uh, and basically, that way we don't all have to mark our own and figure it out. And, yeah. So we'll hash it out as we go through if we disagree. But uh, go ahead. And, uh, so I, I have a comment. Mm -hmm. Um, what I see is that, you know, in reviewing briefly some of these, most of these projects that, you know, other, I, I, I didn't really jump out at me as the ones that are so inappropriate that you know, stupid. And, and so therefore, for us to take up on the, on the assumption that probably most of these are going to probably fit what we want. And so therefore, we're looking for these few, I would imagine, that are not going to need it. And what, what my concern is, and, and I don't know how we can do this, but I just, this is as a comment is that I, I want everybody to realize that the people that have the staff to write the projects are probably going to make step two. There is a real good chance in looking at all this. And, and speaking from the agriculture side, I, 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 I'm not speaking for them, I've just been at their meetings, is that, you know, person, there's no paid staff to do the work for step two. The people that have to pay staff to do the step two are going to automatically, I think we're going to lose a lot of projects on step two. I just, just good because they're, they're, between now and August, everybody's going to be finger pointing and saying, well, who's going to write this thing up? This was hard enough to get the first step done, let alone the second step, which I imagine will be in a lot more depth. Is that, is that a, a correct assumption? The second step yes. will be in a lot yeah, more that's depth. Correct. Yes. Okay. I, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention that. I would imagine that we're going to start off with 10 projects, and by the time we see step two, there's going to be eight, or there's going to be six, and so we're going to lose some really good projects. We've got about eight projects. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that, as I was thinking through this last night, trying to think how to effectively do this without having to go line by line by line, uh, I, I'm thinking maybe what we could do, because I agree with you, Russ, last, as I read through all the projects, there really is nothing that jumps out at yeah. me that isn't yeah. that doesn't qualify. Yeah, me too. I, I just on the surface without us having somebody stand up and say, Do you know what this project will really do to all the people downstream or whatever? Yeah. Uh, barring that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we, we could make this really difficult, we could make it real easy. And I, I I'm I'm more now I'm really kind of focused on step two because I see a lot of these yeah. uh, proposals. But and of course, I, I don't know who's going to do it. Today, we're not here yeah. to do I know. Step two. I know. <laughs> and if we try to reach in here for I know. Information is only as good as we can use it. So. But what I'm thinking is maybe as, as Uma, she's going to call the project and give us a, a kind of a brief overview of the project. And then what I'm thinking is if there's if there's an yes. area where you want I to know. say no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather go to the negative than positive. Yeah. This all looks good. Where the problems are, then that way we solve this a whole bunch of times. Exactly. Yeah, I totally so agree. basically, if there's an area where you see that you want to say, no, this project is a no, uh, call that out. Otherwise, we're going to assume it's a yes. How's that sound? That's exactly where I was headed. 
Although it takes me a long time to be able to vote to articulate. You articulate. Yeah, it just takes a long time. It's Other people go, you mean you want to do it this way? Okay. Yes. It's the, Thank you. it's the academic. I know. Community. I know. So, yeah. yeah, it is. Okay, so I think we've got a method. <laughs> go for it. Okay, so I just wanted to um, say that there are quite a few of the project proponents in the room, and they're here to answer any questions um, that you may have. Um, or to help kind of flesh out the project description. Um, this table, I'm going to be, this is kind of a summary table, mm -hmm. this long one here. Um, it's all just in alphabetical order, so there's really no rhyme or reason to it other than that. Um, and then there's a project identifier on each one. So we're going to be um, on the third page, we'll be starting with the municipal services review. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the City of Portola Wastewater System Infrastructure Improvements. They are a signatory to the MOU. Um, and the project is to reconstruct aged and failing or failed pipes throughout the city to reduce the inf infiltration and inflow. Uh, the type of reconstruction will include open trench, fold and form linings, and point repairs. And it's about $1.4 million for the project. And they will need, they're looking for design through construction. And Robert is here to answer any questions. Um, so let me just go through line by line on the forms. And asking the question? No, I think we just said we're going to assume yes, okay. unless somebody says no. Okay. So does anybody have a no on any of the criteria that would disqualify this for going forward? Actually, I think it sounds like it perfectly fits most yeah. of the criteria. Yeah. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's figure that one's a yes. So the second one is also from the city of uh, Portola. It's a water supply source project. The project um, is to develop a pre-1914 water source for Portola, reducing the dependence on the state water project water. Uh, old lines currently are in place but need to be replaced with new three to four inch lines. And the spring box needs replacement and improvement um, and an on-site chlorination facility. The project is designed through construction, and they estimate about four hundred thousand. Uh, I have a question. Uh, one, right now, Lake Davis water is not the most secure source of water. However, uh, we all invested a great deal of funding in putting in a treatment a treatment plant and everything else. So, would if you were successful in developing this, would you? in normal water years, would you still be using the Lake Davis system or would you would that be a supplementary system to this? Supplemental. So you would plan on taking Portola completely to the alternate to uh, what you're proposing? With, with the purchase of the old Woodbridge project now called uh, Portola Islands mm -hmm. by the Silmac Group, there's going to be 800 dwelling units plus uh, commercial. So in the short term, we won't be relying completely on Lake Davis, but at build-out, that's why the plant was sized the way it was. And it's using about half of its capacity now. And like you said, the reason the city is interested in this project is because uh, at the beginning of spring, it, the lake was 15 feet lower than last year. And we're still not sure if it's going to be reliable through the summer. If I may, Sherry, in future years. the yeah. whole point here is for us to be less dependent on Lake Davis water right. because of current lake levels and serious questions about DWR policies. Yeah, I think probably it's a good idea based on what we're here for. And the, uh, the spring itself, last time we measured, is 40 gallons a minute, which is a pretty good flow. I did map that out. It should be a couple million gallons a month. And you have all the, you'll be having the adequate storage facility, water tank, tanks, yeah. and that. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. anybody else have some questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, how long have you been monitoring the flow there on that spring? Since last year. What, what was your flow there last, say, last fall? 40. Oh, it was 40 at that time. Mm -hmm. 
pretty. Well, he seems to be about eighty now. A huh. couple of thousand acre brush field up above that that's that's recharged. Wish I had one of those. <laughs> yeah. uh, has anyone ever that? isolated your source of arsenic? Never. Has anybody bothered to try? I mean, it's zones. I assume you have zones. You're talking there. about the two wells in the city? Correct. Uh, it's just a naturally occurring part of the... No, but I mean, usually it's stratified. Now, I mean, if anybody's ever researched, otherwise it's a tremendous addition to the like, water find the source and eliminate it. We have a conference call set up with drinking water on uh, maybe tomorrow, I think. Uh, we have been pre-approved for some funding to uh, hook that treatment facility or plant that we were given by the Washoe County Water District last winter. And that's 150 gallons a minute minimum. If, if it works out, Apparently, drinking water has some issues of whether the plant will remove the arsenic um, that we're going to prove to them through our engineering consultants that it, it works fine. But so, under well logs and so forth, nobody's actually identified that you can avoid it by simply blinding off the zone that's producing the arsenic. I mean, not, I've seen it done. Right. Not that I'm aware of. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure that. Be a great it's it's been how many years, Phil, since those wells were put in? Late 1992 uh, or three. Yeah. And, so I'm, and I guess what what we're wondering is if you were to say go deeper into where you're drawing water from another strata that doesn't have arsenic uh, and case off the, the strata right. that does. That I, I can't imagine that. Control. Well, you wouldn't those have options. Well, it's not a matter of even deeper. Mold, you know, typically, you're open for a very wide section, and typically, your source of yeah. water is coming through straps. Before they changed the criteria on arsenic, our wells were fine. Yeah, that's well, all of California. All yeah. of California is yeah. 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 Well, it was US EPA well, that raised the threshold. Okay, any other questions? Okay, is that a yes? Is there a no? <laughs> okay, that's a yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one is the Clio PUE. Um, it's a water system infrastructure upgrade and improvement. We did not receive a signed MOU from Clio. Um, and at this time, they have not identified a sponsor. So. Okay, so based on the criteria we established, and in fairness to everybody who got it signed, uh, that's a no. If at some point in the future things change for everybody, we'll let everybody know. Okay, next. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that there is coffee in the back of the room. Thank you, Carrie, for picking it up. So feel free Thank to you, Carrie. get up and get some. So our next one is East Quincy CSD, uh, infrastructure updates and meter installations. They are a signatory to the MOU. Um, their project is to replace aging concrete water tank with history of uh, leakage with, new, uh, with a new steel tank and install automatic meter reading, water meters, and replace aging infrastructure and service line breaks. Uh, they are a disadvantaged community and um, it will be designed and engineering. Okay. Anybody? Have a note there, or any questions? Okay, then we'll assume that's a yes. That sounds like a really good question. Yes, it does. Okay, Evergreen Arguing and Trailer Park. I see they are not a signatory to the MOU. We did not receive one and we did not identify a sponsor. Okay, so that's a no. Yeah. Okay, Feather River Canyon CSD. This is for their Old Mill Ranch project. Um, they did submit a signed in the unit. Um, the project scope is still being um, worked out, but it will likely include two new wells, one pr primary and one secondary. Um, so about 6,600 feet of new 4-inch PVC and, um, and then possibly treatment as well. 
um, that are looking at permitting and implementation. <coughs> permitting through implementation. Okay. Any questions, anybody? The Feather River Canyon water systems uh, for all the communities have had problems, endless problems. And many of the wells that, uh, through community development, we helped establish had major iron and arsenic and God knows what all else problems. So I think this is probably a good project. Okay, so no no's, it's a yes. Gold Mountain CSD. Um, they are a signatory. Um, we have a few projects on here. The first one is a high altitude tank and well. They're looking at about 2.1 million for that, and it would be project development through construction. Okay. Anybody have a, a no there? Uh, uh, <coughs> just a question, because it's going to come up in a couple other. When a developer comes in and develops a piece of property, um, and it goes through all the permitting process from the counties. Uh, what, what kind of assurance that is there a 10-year uh, warranty on a subdivision and basically after 10 years that's it and then, then the county already absorbs them <coughs> into their system? Uh, Mr. Beal probably could speak to that. You see, what, what, I, what I don't understand is a developer comes in, they're required to do a whole bunch to put all the piping in, the whole water system they're required to put in. The infrastructure. The in, yeah, to make it work, to sell a lot. But there's no guarantee on how long that's going to uh, last. So, now, you step on my head. Uh, there's no guarantee there. So, so there is going to be a, 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 a set of planned obsolescence. In other words, one day, the particular lot owners that own that, that purchased into that subdivision, will be responsible for that eventually. They already right. are. Uh, once they form the CSD, the CSD is responsible for it. Okay, and so the developer's so gone, they build it up, and then now it's on particular It's people. on the community okay. services right. district. Okay. They normally want to set up a subdivision that doesn't become a burden to the county. So That's really a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so an organ the CSD or an organization like that would take on the responsibility for project maintenance beyond the life of the <coughs> Are you seeing that there is a kind of contradiction to that when somebody's asking for two, three, uh, one, a district is asking for $3.5 million that there would be an issue of, well, that didn't work if they need $3 million worth of work. Okay, how about you? I'd be happy to address that. I'm the president of the Gold Mountain CSD. Perfect. Um, there's two issues here. Disregarding the second project, that, that has a whole different reason for that, and that's just to replant water that's used by the golf course up there, which is a privately held entity over which we have no responsibility or authority. So we'll forget that one for now. The first one is the high altitude water tank pump. That can actually be phased. Our real priority is to get a high altitude water storage because the original developer who built the development, he didn't really provide for the lots that are the higher elevations in the community. Um, that developer, of course, went bankrupt. I think anybody familiar with Gold, Gold Mountain knows the history there. So the CSD was stuck with an inferior infrastructure. We made a lot of progress fixing it. For the roughly 20% of lots that are built out today, our capacity is fine, and it probably will be for another year to 18 months. But as more people build in the development, as the economy improves, we're going to start having problems with those high altitude lots, which is the reason we're trying to put in a high altitude storage tank. And that's probably out of that 2.1, about 65% of those costs are associated with the tank itself and the infrastructure to tie it into the rest of the system. The other 35% uh, of that would be in relation to building a new, a new well that would provide water to that tank. Now, we can use one of our three existing wells to pump water uphill to build the tank, but in the long run, our goal is to build a high altitude tank associated well that we keep it full which basically ensures that we have long-term domestic water to all the properties in the development. Could you tell us how long uh, Gold Mountain CSD has been in existence? How many years? I'm relatively new to it, but my recollection is the CSD was formed in the mid-2000s when it was uh, when the original developer went uh, bankrupt, the county took it over. The homeowners at the time up there developed the, or put together the CSD and uh, we're very, you know, we're, we're a real strong CSD right now. We have money in the bank. 
Um, everything seems to be working, so we're looking at the long-term needs of the community. Thank you, Sharon. Sure. I think it was around 2007. That's that they, what I was thinking. Because that they was the Homeowners Association was trying to do everything by themselves, and then they said, okay, Homeowners Association has one thing they have to worry about. CSD has another. So they, members of the HOA split off, made the CSD, and I think it was about 2007. That, thank you, because that's kind of the time frame I was remembering and thinking, geez, you know, that's been a while ago. <laughs> well, okay. the, the, the point that I'm asking, I just want to be fair. I want to be fair to all of you. I mean, if I'm going to use a criteria, I want to use that same criteria for all of the municipalities. If we're just going to pick one out and say, no, we don't want to do this because it's the homeowner's responsibility, for example. It's, it, it, you know, are, are they improving something? Are they saving water? Or are they just replacing something that flat doesn't work? If, if that's what we're doing, then I just want to make sure we're doing that to everybody. And I think that's the whole idea. Okay. And I, this I is simply an eligibility anyway. Right. It, it's, yeah. a, it's no way. Exactly. It's them if they want to go to phase two. So on the high altitude tank and well, anybody have a no? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get up and conduct a view while getting coffee. Uh, with no hearing, no nos, we'll assume then that that's a yes. And uh, I'm thinking the water reclamation facility probably ties into recovery of stormwater or wastewater off of the golf course? It's the recovery of wastewater out of our CSD system, um, which we estimate we could get at, at the price we put in there, about 45% recovery that we go back into irrigating the golf course and community properties. That'll make DWR real happy. Even though we all have, we have independent wells from the golf course, obviously we all fall from the same fraction ground aquifers, so um, they use about 90% of the water in the geographical area bounded by the district, we use 10%. So we're very concerned with what happens at the golf course, even though we have no authority. Well, that's good. Okay, anybody have an objection? A no? Don't shout at you on this? Okay, we'll consider that a yes. Grizzly, Grizzly Lake CSD. to the MOU. Um, their first project, they have submitted uh, four projects. Um, the Crocker Water Service Meter Installation. It's the installation of water service meters to account for lost water leaks and enforce reduction in water usage. They're estimating about 1.5 million and it would be designed through construction. Okay. Anybody have any questions about Grizzly Lake's proposal? Late meter canceled. No, no nose. Well, I know their system's pretty old. Yeah, they have had problems with their system. So, you can do tell. Okay. Hearing no objection, that's a yes. Grizzly like CSD, proper ground control. So this one is to repair, refurbish, and bring up to standard their existing 211,000 gallon ground tank. It's about $200,000 and it would just be implementation of the construction. Any, any no's? That's a yes. Versus light Delta water system repair and upgrade. The project consists of um, replacing main line as needed within the system. Um, they estimate approximately 1,000 lineal feet of main line will need to be replaced, um, along with several service laterals, and install approximately 400 water service meters um, in associated um, facilities. And it's about 1.5 million and will be designed through construction. Okay. Sounds like a lot of people are going to start getting water bills. Needed <laughs> water. Uh, any objections? No, nope. that's a yes. There's the like CSD Delacour water tank repair. And this one's to repair and bring up to standards the Delacour's uh, 300,000 gallon water tank. They estimate about 200,000 and it would be construction. So they already have. Design, engineering, and all that is done for you? I believe so. Okay. 
Any objections? Any no's? Okay, that's a yes. Oh boy. Plymouth yes. County Environmental Health, Groundwater Monitoring and Map. Um, so this one, Plymouth County is uh, a signatory, and so we'll cover all of the um, departments that we're going to go through uh, in the next, I don't know, 20 projects or so. Um, this one is to implement groundwater monitoring program for the sta state mandate. Um, that's to identify, or in to identify water quality impacts of the on-site sewage disposal systems. They estimate about 30 to 40,000, I believe that's per year, and that would be implementation of the project. Okay. Any, any discussion or objections? Did you say per year? I think that's That's like, kind of like, oh, <laughs> don't get it. Well, it just says 30 Unless to 40,000. Unless they go for another round of funding. It does say 30 to 40,000, and it would have to be um, reviewed every five years, so not annually, sorry. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking in the discussions that I heard on it that the 30 to 40,000 is for the program. Okay. And then, like you say, if it goes beyond that or they identify some problem areas, then I think we will be looking for more grant. So any okay. objections to this one? Questions? Okay, that's it. Yeah. Plumas County Flood Control District, IRWM Plan Implementation Capacity Building. This is a, I think, goes to what Russell was talking about, about planning and implementation for people who do not have that capacity. So, would you like to give us a little background on that? Sure, this is something that uh, I believe Randy and Tim collaborated on. Um, and it's to, you know, to build implementation capacity for actions, projects, information, and monitoring needs that are identified through the plan update process. And again, this is across the board with, within all the work groups. Um, the, you know, the greatest cons one of the greatest concerns is that there isn't the capacity to implement these projects, to actually put the grant applications together, to um, do the grant administration and the monitoring. And this is an effort to um, to address that. And Tim, do you want to add anything? No, you did a great job. <laughs> so my question for Tim would be, since Randy's not here to answer any question, is how do you propose to do that? Just so everybody knows. Well, the, one of the concepts that it doesn't have to be the primary method of implementation, but it would seem to be an effort to augment the staff of the county to provide resources to these smaller districts and smaller entities that don't have the infrastructure uh, to have staff. But they would be uh, really be farmed out to various entities on a day-to-day -day basis, um, conducting work to fulfill the goals of the RWMP. I, can, I know there's some resource conservation districts that have a budget, a very small budget, no staff, and, and uh, some other groups that really would certainly serve well to have a resource like this. So uh, Dr. Randy and I have been suggesting that it be a staff person under the direction of the of, of Columbus County Flood Control District and that the workload of that person be directed by Randy or by whoever the, the county selects uh, to do just that. I don't, I, I don't have an objection to this moving forward, but I will say that I will want to see it fleshed out because I don't see this as a function of the county. I see the county, and that's why I wanted a little more uh, direction. I see the county helping the areas that do not have the capacity by funding or uh, con contracting with a grant writer that would be available to them or something like that. I do, I do not really want to see county adding staff, um, even under a grant type of a situation. Um, and and, and I really think that at some point, all of these, the, the CSDs, the RCDs, have to, their capacity has to be built within them, not dependent on the county, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I could see the county assisting them to have build their own capacity 
but where I have a problem is where the county becomes the godmother right. yet again uh, with ongoing cost and obligations and, and they basically don't have any real capacity and then our funding dries up and they're left high and dry again. So I think we need to focus more on literally building their capacity to do their own stuff rather than the county doing it for them. Sure, it also prolongs the inevitable consolidation of a whole lot of entities. Once they accept reality, they decide maybe they'll consolidate. We have an awful lot of fringe districts, borderline. Yeah, and a recognition of those those points that Jerry that you made, and, and uh, that the, the proposal is one of many. And if there's a sensitivity to, to increasing staff, then there are other options: uh, mm -hmm. building the infrastructure of the individual district, uh, contract services. That's you know. kind of what I'm. I guess because part of this exercise is to encourage the proponents if we see a problem area, yeah. and so that would be my encouragement: is uh, that. We need to explore those other options sure. in depth in the in the ultimate proposal. And the other thing uh, that everybody needs to know is that uh, county is going to be looking at how we reform the flood control district and and what happens with it uh, probably over the next. Well, it's Kevin Doss and my project, so it'll probably be over the next six months to. This might so, be a golden opportunity too to, to re revisit the relationship between the two counties because Sierra yeah. County has a flood control district formed in 1952 as well, um, and maybe you know with the, the valley being you know 50-50 so to speak, this right. might be a a golden opportunity to really um, manage how how this is going to be implemented in the future mm -hmm. because the Irwin is going to continue to get funded we assume. And that will be continue to be this process with this group and others. And, and how do we build capacity within these organizations to be more competitive with future funding? That's that's really the goal. That's it. Yeah. So as it stands, I I, I don't I'm not voicing a, a no. I'm just voicing that when you flesh it out, we need to look at some of those other things. So anybody have a no? Okay. That's a yes. Plymouth County Public Works, Chandler Road Bridge. Correct stream bags erosion upstream from the bridge. That's good because when I first read it, I was like, we're replacing a bridge? I don't think so. <laughs> any any uh, further description you'd like to add to that? Anna? I would just say that um, the next, I don't know, eight of them or so are very similar to this. It's correcting erosion around the bridges and um, replacing culverts, that sort of thing. So they identified them all as separate projects at this point. Um, it might be something that they could look at integrating yeah. all those mm -hmm. into, you know, just a single, or one or two projects. Yeah. I think we should uh, ask them to integrate the projects that are of a similar nature, because it really doesn't matter what road they're on if, yeah. if they're in their project package. Yeah, it's a water quality thing. And it would certainly make things a lot easier. So, looking at them, I think almost all of those, as you said, are all the way down to uh, the last one being Stanchel Lane Bridge, I guess, are all very similar to the road, stream bank erosion, yeah, okay. including at um, 25 also. Okay, so uh, I guess the way we want to handle that is the project, unless there's a no, is a yes, but that they need to consolidate them all into one package. Okay. Okay, so that's a yes with consolidation. Geez, that's good. We already cut down. <laughs> the approximate budget, et cetera, that all in the second phase start getting real hard numbers. Yeah. And they'll look at phasing also of the project and what those various phases will cost. Okay, so I think if I'm right, that takes us down to Plumas County Public Works Walker Ranch CSD infrastructure update. And then this is to address um, eliminating leakage from their water supply system. 
And again, they haven't come up with a budget yet. This is, this is kind of an initial project they have uh, that they're looking at, and so it was designed through construction. And somebody just asked me a question yesterday, so I'll make this clear because a lot of people apparently don't know. There is a literal, literal paper subdivision called Walker Ranch in my district. However, the CSD, and there are no homes there and no infrastructure, it's just barely. The CSD covers Bailey Creek, Foxwood, and a big portion of the peninsula. So when we talk about Walker Ramp CSD, we're not talking about just the subdivision. We're talking about the whole community services district. So that's basically why it's an aging system, because people are like, well, they haven't even built anything. How could it be aging? <laughs> it's because they've had other things built for a long time. So any objections to that one? Okay, that's a yes. Yeah. Somebody built something. <laughs> Get the county away from having yeah. to be the chief, the board for the CSD. We need that. Okay, Lewis County Public Works, Humbug Valley Road. That would still be part of that consolidation. Lewis Eureka CSD, new municipal drinking water well. Lewis Eureka CSD is a signatory to the MOU. Um, this project is to develop a new municipal drinking water well to increase the reliability of present and future water supplies and the assured delivery of um, water that meets all state and federal water standards, including an arsenic removal system. It's estimated to be about $3.6 million, and it would be designed through construction. And Frank is here this on the adding thing. Would you like to add something? Yeah. Uh, well, we have uh, we do have arsenic in our in our drinking water wells that we use now, and we're in the process of uh, we need to be in compliance by 2016, of November, November 2016. So that part, the first part of our compliance schedule with the state is already going. The few projects that I requested dealing with our water system were identified in the preliminary engineering report that we had done because the engineering report is required to go after SRF funding, state revolvement. So rather than start doing the engineering report now, we went ahead and started it all several years ago. And uh, this is one area that they said, you know, you have two wells now. If your demand goes up, you're going to need a third. Well, through the process of conservation and the measures that we've taken for this year, we've identified that we only need two for now. But if we have one section of our area that has an, only has one home in it out of 40, mm -hmm. if those other 39 homes goes in, we're going to need a third well. And so this was, okay, prime opportunity to go ahead and get <clears throat> something set up so that it's planned for in the future. Super. Okay, anybody have a problem? Any, any no's out there? That's a yes. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, from the Eureka CSD, treated wastewater reuse. This seems to be a new theme <laughs> with the drought. So. Uh, anybody have an objection to that? Okay, that's a yes. Okay, from the Eureka water meter installation. More water bills with meters. Anybody? It will be by the year 2025. 2025, okay. And I guess all of the districts then will, water you know, supply districts will be required to have them in by then. Right. So, anybody have an objection to that one? No? That's a yes. In the event you fail these, all these meter connections and installations, what's your alternative? Obviously, you're going to go back to your rate payer then, right? With any of these projects, you probably have to go back to your rate payer, Jeff. Well, I wouldn't like to be on your board. You, you're facing about uh, <laughs> just this side about two, about five million dollars. The, the first estimate when they did the PER to make all these improvements was just over five and a half million. Huh? However, I will say that I think it's not just his district. Yeah, no, it's every district. Every, every, every district is in the same boat. Yeah. So we can hope that there will be some funding grant opportunities that do come along. For that's, this thing. that's what we're hoping. Great. Yeah. Okay, Plumas Eureka.
week of CSD water storage tank replacement. Replace a small tank with a new 400,000 gallon welded steel tank. The uh, project would increase the water storage capability by approximately 47.5%. It's like about 1.1 million and it would be designed through construction. Anybody have a question or a, a no? Okay, that's a yes. Plumes Rica CSD WWTP6 upgrade. What? Tell us what. Oh, that's wastewater treatment. I got it. Great. Uh, currently, our wastewater treatment plant number six was built in the early 70s. It is a, re a, a very small reclamation facility. We do reclaim water back to the golf course. And due to its age and the change of uh, requirements to be able to use reclaimed water, uh, I would need this analyzed a little further to find out what kind of upgrades and or replacements are necessary to meet the current type of 22 water recycling requirements. I currently have a, uh, uh, a wastewater feasibility study, a reuse feasibility study being performed by Baston Engineering. Um, we have another wastewater plant that was just upgraded in 2007, and we would like to get that water on to the back nine of the golf course, because right now treatment plant six only goes to the front nine. Yeah. So basically we would be reclaiming uh, from May, April or May until about October of each year, and thereby helping to establish our community leach field, uh, its longevity. Okay. Not, not to mention, the golf course would then reduce their surface water that they use to irrigate the golf course, because yeah. they're a separate entity than we are. Any objections? That's a yes. Okay. Wastewater treatment plant seven, lift station. Uh, this particular project, uh, wastewater treatment plant number seven, the lift station was put in uh, in the early 80s. And unfortunately, it's in front, it's right in front of somebody's front yard, <laughs> right off the side of the road. The uh, bad part is the aging infrastructure of the actual lift station itself. Um, it takes a lot of time on my guys to make sure that the pumps are okay, everything works. We do have an alarm system that tells us when we go high level. Back when they rebuilt Plant 7, back in 2007, they had a portion of that project that was going to relocate that lift station on the other side of the street on CSD property and then provide it with a 1,000-gallon storage cooling tank in case the alarms went off and we couldn't get there fast enough for some I and I problem in that area. The existing uh, lift station, if it overflows, it goes about 20 feet down into a drainage that goes right into the middle of Fort Confederate. I think that sounds like a very good project. That, that's in front of my, that, that homeowner is my in-laws, so I like to vote him no. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to be played with rocks. For the record, that's inappropriate. <laughs> One more inappropriate statement by me. Okay. However, it is possible that they would buy the home. Yes, that could be a good deal. That'll be yes for me. <laughs> okay. I changed my vote. So we got a unanimous yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff, for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, QSCD, water system improvements and fuel reduction. Um, the R is signatory to the MOU. The project includes a spring UV disinfection plant, um, wildland fuel reduction project and then a pressure zone feasibility study for South Quincy um, and water line replacements for various areas, like estimating 390,000 and it would be studied through construction. Hmm. That sounds like a pretty reasonable amount. <laughs> Any objections to that one? Okay, that's a yes. Sierra County. Oh, well, half man. We can't give them any. <laughs> Sierra County water quality roadway improvements. That sounds very similar to Plymouth County roadway improvements. Anybody have any objections to that one? Okay, that's a yes. Sierra County, Sierraville fuel tank removal and remediation. This is, um, this is for fuel tanks, above ground fuel tanks that have leaked on private property that is now under the control of the county. They're estimating 225000 and it would be assessment due construction for implementation. And this would be for 
water quality purposes. Is that the old gas station we've been expanding for a long time? Yep. Any objections? Okay, that's yes. Sierra Battle PUD, alternate water source study and development. They are a signatory. Um, they received a directive from DWR to develop a second uh, a secondary water source, and so this would be the study for the options um, for that and then developing it. And they're estimating anywhere from, I, I believe this 50,000 to 450 is for the study through the implementation of it. So. Well, that is an elegant sketch. Could be the 450. Sherry? Yes. Yeah, question. Sure. Is there. A, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. Yes. <laughs> Sherry is okay. Uh, is there anybody here from Sierraville? Or, Tim, can you speak to that? Cannot, no. Well, I know they're having. I, uh, what I know about it is they're having issues just with their spring, the same as Portola, with this drought. They're starting to get pressure for that source, so yeah, I encourage them to look for alternative, so they're looking somewhere to put a well or... I wonder what their annual use, current annual use is and projected use. Oh, it's substantial. Well, I'm, I think with them being under a directive yeah. uh, from DWR, they, they probably don't have a big choice on doing something. Yeah. So but, but in this case, they're eligible anyway right. to make the list. Right. Yeah. Anybody got a note? <laughs> okay, that's a yes. WCSD storage tank. And they're a disadvantaged community, I believe. But we're proud. That's right. <laughs> and you should be. And it might get you some money. <laughs> but could you clarify that, that uh, letters for me? WCSD. Westwood Community Services. Thank you very much. And the thing, I think that's that a test. <laughs> yes, it was. And you passed. Good. And, and sort of. I think one of the important things to point out is that although Westwood is not necessarily within this jurisdiction, if you remember, we had a discussion at the meeting where the sound didn't record <laughs> that we are going to include some of the areas that are adjacent to our watershed who have direct impact on the watershed. Well, Westwood is within yeah, the watershed. Water, yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm just reminding people that we had that discussion because I think we'll be seeing some things from some areas that aren't. Yes, that's the one I'm thinking of. So anybody have an objection? Okay, that's a yes. So we're done with municipal. Yippee! Where would you like to go from here? Um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's uh, get let's take a five minute break at the yeah. Let's do it now. I need more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> need more coffee.